That's why I decided to do something that to something I learned recently, like uh, Unix sockets. So I've never had to do like sockets program programming before until last week. So I decided I'll share a bit on what I've learned uh, or what I've read through the library. So for those that don't know me, I'm Kos Yang. I work remotely for Discourse from Singapore. So Discourse is basically an open source forum software, and we basically help community managers like manage an online community, and we try to enable people to uh, engage in civilized discussion. So the good thing is we are hiring, uh, and we. So the thing at Discourse is that we hire from commits because Discourse is an open source project. Anyone have access to the source code? You can always look for like bugs and features on our in our own forum itself to fix them. So once you get our attention, then we'll get in touch with you and stuff. So that's how I get in, uh, how I got into Discourse, and that's how almost all Discourse employees got into Discourse. So currently, we are at employee number 10, I think, and we're we are hiring more. Uh, so if you're interested, interested, just head to Discourse and just start committing to our repository. Uh, anyway, I have durian stickers. So the durian seasons are, uh, durian season is coming up, so I, I printed a lot of like, durian stickers if you're interested. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm a big fan of durian, so if you want a sticker, you can come and look for me later after the, the, the talks, la, then I'll, I'll pass you one. Then you can show off. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Sorry? Uh, uh, so you, then you can show off like, uh, your sticker on your laptop to show your love for durians. Okay, uh, so I'll start into like, the, the stuff proper. So, like, so first you have to understand like, what is a Unix, uh, Unix socket, right? There's different types of socket, there's like TCP sockets and stuff, but today we're just going to focus on Unix sockets. If you look up Wikipedia, uh, in short, it's basically uh, like in a communications endpoint that allows you to uh, basically transfer data between two processors on the same host. The unique thing about Unix socket is that they use the file system as their address namespace. So let, let's say if you're using TCP sockets, right? You have to bind to uh, a certain, or you listen on a certain port. But for Unix socket, it's a bit different. I'll, I'll just uh, show you code, which is a lot easier to understand. Like. So in Ruby code, right? Uh, Ruby comes default with like a socket library. So it's just a thin wrapper around like the the uh, Unix sockets commands. Uh, so the first thing you can do is you want to start a Unix server. So what you can do is just call Unix server new, and then you pass it the path, like the file path that you want the, the socket file to be created. And once you have the server object, you can just call server.set. So what you basically do, it blocks until it receives a connection, and it returns you a <coughs> Unix socket object, which I'll cover later. And then uh, once you accept the connection, or once you receive a connection, you can actually read from the socket itself. So that's reading like data from the socket, and then you can write something back in return. And in this case, uh, just to demonstrate how you are exchanging, uh, basically passing data between two processors, I'll just write my process P, like my process ID back to the other socket that's connecting. And then it's just, then at the end you have to clean up, like you have to, call, you have to close the socket, otherwise you'll be leaking like a file descriptor. And then uh, this, I'm removing the, like, the socket file just so that I can just keep reusing this script without having to manually <laughs> clean it up. And then this would be the way that you connect the socket to, so like the, the server that's waiting for a connection. So you just have to call unix socket.new. So this, uh, you will give it the path that your server, that you use for your server, and you return you an uh, instance of a unix socket object. It's the same class that is returned in the previous code where you basically, when you call server.set, it gives you a socket. So it's the same uh, cl uh, class of object. And then I will write like socket.write hello world from process speed. So this, the sockets like this, process ID, and then I'll read the response from the, uh, from the server. So, okay, uh, so I'm just going to show you guys how, to, how it works. Basically, it's pretty simple. So I start my server. I'm waiting for, is it too small? Yep, so I'm waiting for a new connection, right? Then I can just call my socket, uh, the file, and then, yep, so you can basically see, uh, I send hello world from this pit, uh, this process ID, and then I basically print out the process ID from the server itself, so it's, so I basically exchange, like, data between uh, two processes. So, so what are some of the use cases for this, like, pattern, like, why would you, like, what are some of the cases where you need to exchange data between two processes? So the first one would be, like, uh, a simple web server. So, what you see here, you can just ignore most of it, but it's basically a sample Nginx configuration file. Uh, the most important thing here like, to note, or the gist of this thing, is like, you can, in Nginx, you can actually, like most people will use Nginx as a proxy, right? You get connection, you just use Nginx as a load balancer, and then you just 
for uh, forward the request to uh, like Unicorn or Puma or whatever behind uh, or whatever Ruby web server that you're using. So you can actually use uh, uh, give it a Unix uh, socket like the file the file path, and then you can just forward like any uh, so anything I received uh, anything any request that that nginx receives you just forward to uh, to the web server. Then the web server is actually very uh, similar to what I just showed you uh, at the start. Uh, the only difference is instead of like just reading line, I will read. Uh, I'll keep reading from socket until I reach a carriage return and a new line, because that's like the HTTP. Uh, that's the end of the HTTP headers. I'll print out the headers just for fun, and then I'll return it like HT, uh, HTTP one OK. So that's basically I, I'm just telling it I uh, response received. Then now I've I will. Sh so now I'm just gonna show you how it works. Nginx.com. Okay, so I have my Nginx server running, right? So what if I call the server itself? Right, so I'm just sending a request. So bad gateway, right? Because I've it can't. Uh, so you can tell the from error, it can't connect to the Unix socket because I haven't started the server yet. So I can start the server. I'll just start it at the back. Right, so I'm uh, oops, too small. So now my sort of mini web server is, or simple web server is waiting for a connection. And then I can just uh, send a request to Nginx again. Then yay, connection received at this timestamp. So that's how you would, like, that's one of the use cases. Um, yeah, so if you're using like Unicorn, Puma, or Teen, any Ruby web server, most of them will allow you to listen on a socket instead of like a, a port number. Then you can just use like Nginx to forward it. So that's one of the use cases. Uh, the other, oh, so this was, uh, so if you're interested in finding out more, you can, uh, in terms of how like uh, your web server connects with Nginx, like most of the examples from this talk, I inspired from this blog post, you can read up more. And then the second use case was actually uh, it's actually called, like, it's like you want to build a stat server, but why would you need that? So uh, recently at this course, right, we upgraded to Ruby 2.4. But then once we upgraded, right, uh, so this is the memory graph for one of our customers, Unicorns and Sidekick. So one of our customers, we deployed Ruby 2.4 thinking that you, uh, it's supposed to uh, be, uh, use less memory. Uh, well, it did use less memory, but the only thing is that we, it starts leaking after a while. So you can see all these spikes. Like it used to be pretty stable, then sometimes when we start the app, it goes down, but then some some job is leaking memory, so we have to figure out why. The thing is, it's not easy to figure out why. Uh, so Sam Saffron, uh, who's one of the co-founders of Discourse and happens to be my boss, so he has debugged like Sidekick in the past, like memory leaks in Sidekick in the past. Uh, so one of the things he suggested is basically you want to graph uh, GC stat. Uh, so for those that don't know, like GC stat, right, it basically returns a hash containing information about the GC for that process at, a, at a whatever that point in time. So uh, if you run like if you enable allocation tracing, GC stack can even give you like um, uh, sorry. If you run allocation tracing, you can even do a heap. Uh, you can do a heap dump, and it'll tell you like which objects are allocated at what file and which line. So it's, it, it basically en enables you to pinpoint like uh, where your leak is happening. So the first thing is trying to get GC stack. So you have to get it out of the process, right? But how do you do that? Like you can't just what. Uh, call, you, there's no like Rails console, no, no nothing, right? Uh, so one of the ways you can do it is uh, is using uh, RB trace. Yep. Okay, so I don't know. Uh, so RB trace is basically a tool that uh, allows you to listen on the process and then just uh, watch for all the methods that's being caught in real time. So just to give you an example, I will, I'll just boot a server. Right, so now I have my servo running, I'll need to find the IE. Okay, so, uh, so I have my, the, the Puma is running on the process ID 29007, right? So what I can do with RB trace is basically 
ask it to give me like all the methods that have been called in real time. So if I, uh, this is not good. Okay, but uh, you get to <laughs> read the docs in Arbitrace and you'll, yeah, you'll be able to uh, figure out something. It should work. Uh, so anyway, so uh, you can also like execute GC stat in Arbitrace. So that was what I did actually at the start. Uh, you, you don't have to read this, but basically when I was basically tasked like to okay, grab GC stat from the sidekick process so that we can graph it, right? What I did was, was act to actually write a rake task. Uh, so I wrote a shell command to go and grab the process ID of sidekick, then use that process ID, pass it to Arbitrace and call GC stat. But then GC stat doesn't give you nice outputs. Like it'll give you, like it prints out a lot of other junk. Like. I mean, it's not junk, it's just things that are not relevant to what you, what you want. So it's not easy to get output. So what I had to do was basically write it to a temp, open a temp file, write it right to it. And then when you exit, right, you read from temp file, pass it to JSON, and then your whatever service that's asking for the stats can consume it, right? So there's actually a simple, uh, a easier way to do it, which is uh, to use a stat server. So the API for the stat server is pretty simple. Like you just initialize, then you have to, so you want to start the server. It's the same thing, you just uh, initialize a new instance of like Unix server. And then stop is just closing the server and then removing the socket file path. Uh, so in start, you also see there's a spawn thread, right? So because remember that um, socket uh, server dot accept blocks. It's a it's a it's a blocking method. So what, you don't need to block your process. Like you can't boot psychic and then have that blocking everything, right? So what what we do is instead we just run it in a new thread and just and then just run a while loop. And then next in accept connections, it's basically the same thing as uh, uh, what I showed in like the simple uh, writing to a socket uh, example at the start. But instead, right now we can you basically read line, and then you can read like a command that's been written to the socket, and then based on the command, I right, just write a simple case statement uh, what it, what the socket should write back to the to the asking socket. Yep. So in this case, we'll like when we receive like GC stat, I'll just call like GC dot stat then to JSON, and then I'll write it back into the socket so that the other guy can read it. Uh, I'll show you. <sighs> okay, there's a lot of typing to do here. So I created the stat server and then start. So the thread is running, right? So now I can easily um, connect to the socket. Yeah, so socket is just a command line tool that you can use to basically connect to the socket. La. So uh, it's, just some, it's just easier to use. So I can say uh, testing. Oh, invalid command, then I can co connect to it again, GC stat. Yeah, so I basically get a easy, so I basically get an easy way. So like how, but because we can do it in Ruby, like I can create a Unix socket in Ruby, right? You can easily add it to any Ruby script and then read, uh, basically ask this stat server for things. And then you'll write the output back to the socket and then it makes it easy, easier to consume. Like there's no need for like my complicated rig task. Uh, the bad thing about the rig task is, as well, right? It's basically we open a file each time we um, try to get the stats. So what if you have five psychic processors? You're basically opening a file five times. Yep. So that's the demo. And yep. So that's all I have from my brief learning about sockets, Unix sockets, the uh, last week. So does anyone have any questions? Nope. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So it uses the uh, uses a file like to exchange data between the two sockets. Yeah. So there's no Sorry? So the Yeah. So the good thing about using a Unix socket is like is that your connections are always local, or at least via the file system, like it will be on the same host. Whereas TCP you can connect to somewhere else, right? Like another address somewhere. Whereas Unix sockets usually unless you have a, a file system that's across different servers, it's you gotta connect to the socket. I think the ticket to the 
earlier guy's question. Mm -hmm. <coughs> a socket is addressed through the file system, uh -huh. but the socket itself isn't a file in the traditional sense. It's, it's a different mechanism that just uses the file system for address. Okay, does that make more sense to you now? Okay. Yeah. They, where you have a file name that create, but when it creates a socket, it actually creates a file in the file system. But then if you open another shell and say files, file space slash temp slash whatever dot sock, it'll say it's a Unix socket file. It, 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 <coughs> which you cannot read or write to except using the uh, socket IO system files. Okay, which are, pat which are patterned after standard IO, but are not the same thing as standard IO. <laughs> Any questions? <coughs> Okay, so uh, if you have any more questions or you want, uh, don't forget, like, if you want a durian sticker, please look for me after the talk. <laughs> oh, no, after the meetup when, when everyone's just mingling around. Yep, so next we'll have Mike from um, Pocket Math. So he'll be giving the next talk, like, code review, like, do we do it right?